My name is Valerie, and I'm 29 years old. I've been wanting to talk about this since it happened, but thanks to legal issues, I couldn't really say anything until I was clear to talk about it. Now that I can, I want this to be my little revenge on my mother-in-law. I don't want her to ever come back or show her face anywhere around where we are. This will be a warning against her trying. Let me start by saying that Adrian and I only cross paths because of our mothers. Adrian's mother, Felicia, and my mother, Veronica, were pretty good friends. The two of them had met up for coffee after years one day, and they both realized that they had single children. They decided to set their children up, and that's how Adrian and I found ourselves sitting at the same coffee shop a week later. Although it was a little awkward that our mother set us up, we quickly warmed up to each other. We found out that we had a lot in common, like our mutual love for action movies and pizza. We found ourselves so immersed in conversation that we didn't even realize how much time had passed. Before we knew it, the sun began setting on us. We decided to say goodbye then, but promised to meet each other again soon. We met again the next week for a newly released action movie and pizza. We continued to go on dates almost every week for the next two months. I found myself falling deeply in love with Adrian. Adrian also fell in love with me, and I could tell because every time he saw me, his entire face would light up. He would pay close attention to everything I said, And if ever I mentioned something I wanted, if it was affordable, he would show up on the next date with the thing. I loved his sense of humor and how attentive he was. I loved how much he cared for me and how much effort he put in for me, which is why I was the one to make the first move and ask him to be my boyfriend. He obviously enthusiastically said yes. We officially introduced each other as a couple to our parents. Both of our mothers were overjoyed and proud that they were the reason we were together in the first place. However, as the months passed, I began to notice Adrian's mother, Felicia's behavior towards me, change. Felicia would be cold and distant from me. Sometimes she would make snide remarks about me under her breath. I would ask her why she was behaving that way or why she said something rude, and Felicia always told me that it was nothing, or she would try to convince me that I was making it all up in my head and hearing things. It bothered me a lot, and finally one day I spoke to Adrian about it. Adrian got angry and promised me that he would make sure his mother treated me properly. I was grateful for that. I knew how much Adrian loved his mother but the fact that he would stand up for me against his mother made me incredibly happy. I didn't know what Adrian had said to his mother because after that, Felicia treated me like she always had before she changed. I was grateful and enjoyed my stress-free time. Adrian and I dated for two years before deciding to get married. Our wedding was a small and intimate ceremony. Only our closest friends and family were present. Shortly after we got married, tragedy struck Adrian's mother, Felicia. Her house had caught fire and had burned to the ground. It happened due to faulty electrical wiring. Thankfully, Felicia was all right and unharmed. She had been out when the house caught fire. Since she had no place to stay, we opened our house to her. She lived there with us for the next year. In that year, Adrian and I experienced great success in our careers. Since we were in a place to start a family, we decided to start trying. Within two months, I had gotten pregnant. Adrian and I were overjoyed. We had always talked about being parents, and the fact that our dream was finally coming true made us feel really good but our joy slowly started fading when Felicia gradually became more controlling. I had been suffering from a lot of morning sickness and cramping. My legs got swollen 
and it became very hard for me to do all the things around the house because all of my energy was spent at work. Felicia could not stand that. She would yell at me to do her work. One day, I had come home earlier from work because I was in too much pain. I lay down on the bed and took a short nap, but I was rudely awoken a little while later by Felicia. Felicia began yelling at me for not having done her laundry. I was still pretty disoriented from being awoken from my sleep, so I asked Felicia what she was talking about. Valerie, why didn't you do the laundry today? Now I have nothing to wear. Wait, what? Why didn't you do your own laundry? It's not my responsibility. It's your responsibility as the host to take care of that. I'm literally in so much pain right now. Are you trying to start a fight about this? Oh, come on. You're just making a big deal out of it. Pregnancy isn't that bad, and you're exaggerating for attention. You have no idea what I'm going through. It's not easy for me to manage work and the house chores when I'm feeling so unwell. That's not my problem. I was pregnant once also, and I never experienced all this. Get out, get out, get out, get out of the room, get out of the house, get out of my life. How dare you talk to me like I'm faking everything? Who are you? Can you feel what I'm feeling? Get out. Felicia looked scared and quickly left the room. I couldn't believe her audacity. How dare Dare she try to tell me my pain wasn't real? What would I get from faking my pains? At the same time I was yelling at Felicia, Adrian had gotten home from work and he heard me. He worriedly ran up the stairs to check on me. He got there just in time to see his mother hurry and leave the room in fear. He walked into our room carefully and saw me crying hysterically on the bed. He quickly sat down next to me and hugged me. He let me cry for a little while before asking me why I was crying. I recounted everything that had happened with Felicia and how she had been constantly yelling at me whenever I didn't do the house chores. Adrian got really angry and got up to talk to his mother, but I stopped him. He saw my pleading face and calmed down. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I know how upset you'd get. I didn't want you to end up evicting your mother, causing more tension between you two. I felt sorry for her, so I kept it to myself. Babe, I understand why you did that, but I should have known what was going on. I want you to share everything with me, especially when it's affecting you like this. I'm sorry, darling. I should have told you, but I didn't want to cause more problems. You never have to bear these things alone. We're a team, remember? I promise you, I'll talk to my mother calmly about her behavior, and I want you to be there with me for that conversation. Together, we walked into Felicia's room. I was nervous about what Adrian was going to do. I know that he gets very protective of me, and his temper isn't the best. While I'm hurt... I hoped he wouldn't do something he regretted. Felicia looked surprised and asked why we were in her room. Why are you both in my room? What's going on? Enough with the act. Valerie told me everything. You've been constantly yelling at her about the household chores. Well, she should be doing them. After all, I'm just a guest here, right? You could have either done them yourself or you could have waited for me to do them. You didn't need to bother Valerie like that. It's a woman's job to handle household chores. You would never catch me asking you for help with these kinds of tasks. I don't care about your beliefs. It's my house, my rules. I'm your mother. You can't tell me what to do. This is my home, and if you can't respect that, then maybe it's time you find another place to live. You can't do that. I have nowhere else to go. The only reason I haven't evicted you already is because Valerie asked me not to. But if you cross the line again, I won't hesitate. I promise I won't do it again. Just please don't kick me out. 
You need to change, Mom. Treat Valerie with respect like the family she is to us. All right. And so, the rest of my pregnancy went off relatively smoothly. My symptoms were alleviated as I got further along with my pregnancy. Finally, I gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Adrian and I were overjoyed to welcome our precious daughter into our family. We named her Ava. I stayed in the hospital for two more days after I gave birth. On the third day, Adrian picked me and our daughter up from the hospital before he left for work and dropped us home. Felicia warmly greeted the three of us. Oh, look at my precious granddaughter. You've done such a wonderful job, Valerie. She's the most beautiful bundle of joy. Thank you, Felicia. It means a lot coming from you. Valerie needs some rest now, Mom. She's just given birth, and Ava kept her up through the night. Don't worry. I'll take care of the baby. You go and get some rest, Valerie. I don't want to be away from Ava so soon. Trust me, you'll need this rest soon enough. Mom will take good care of her. You rest, dear. I'll be here to look after Ava. All right, but just for a couple of hours, then I'll take over. That sounds fair. You rest now, and I'll do the same later. Thank you, Mom. With that, Adrian left to go to work while I went to sleep, and Felicia looked after Ava. I woke up two hours later to Ava crying loudly. I got worried and went to check on what was going on. The sound of crying was coming from Felicia's room. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if Felicia was purposely ignoring my daughter or if she was somehow sleeping through the loud noise. I knocked on Felicia's door but got no response. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. Panic started to settle in. I began banging on the door. After two minutes of banging on the door and yelling for Felicia to open it, she finally opened the door just enough for me to see a portion of her face. Felicia, what are you doing? Let me see Ava. I'm just trying to teach you a lesson. You can't rely on Adrian for everything. You need to take responsibility for your duties around the house. This is not the way to teach a lesson. Give me my child right now. Complete your chores, and then you can have Ava back. It's time you learn to handle your responsibilities. What is wrong with you? Remember, the longer you take to complete the chores, the longer your child goes hungry. Fear had replaced the anger in me. I was ready to do anything that Felicia asked me, as long as Ava was safe. I didn't know why she was being this cruel to me right after I had given birth. But I didn't have the luxury of arguing about it. I needed my baby fed and safe. I asked Felicia what needed to be done. Felicia told me that there was a pile of dishes to be done, and that the house needed to be vacuumed because it had gotten dusty. The common bathroom also had to be scrubbed clean. Felicia said I had to finish everything before Adrian came back, and that I could not tell Adrian anything about it. Otherwise, she would make things worse for me. I nodded through sobs and left to complete the chores. I sobbed because I was still in pain, but I knew that I had no choice. I spent the next couple of hours toiling away to make the house clean for Felicia. I had to take a few painkillers to stop me from fainting from pain and exhaustion. I also had to be careful not to put any strain on my stitches and tear them. All in all, I was having a tough time, and I kept crying as I did the chores. I wanted to tell Adrian because this was beyond cruel, but I was scared about what Felicia might do to Ava. I was glad that Felicia had managed to get Ava to stop crying, but I was still scared about what the future had in store for us. I just wished that there was some way out of this. The universe had heard my wish and did more than I had hoped for. You see, that day Adrian arrived two hours earlier from work to surprise Ava and me. However, when he walked into the house, he couldn't find me anywhere. He saw the light in the common bathroom switched on and walked in to see me on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor while sobbing. Adrian rushed over to me and asked why I was overexerting myself like this. At the sight of him, I started sobbing harder. Adrian panicked and pulled me into his arms. 
he gently stroked my hair as he waited for me to calm down. When I did, I told him about what Felicia had done. Adrian was seething, and unlike last time, I did not stop him. Adrian banged on Felicia's door and asked her to open up. Felicia opened the door and looked at him in surprise. Adrian, how come you came home early? Did you forget something? I didn't forget anything. I came home early because I wanted to surprise Ava and see my family, but instead, I found you trying to teach my wife a lesson in the worst possible way. Oh, come on. I was just trying to help her be a better wife and mother. She needs to learn to handle her responsibilities. Help? That was no help. It was cruel and heartless. How could you treat her like that? She needs to learn. It's for her own good. For her own good? Look at our child. You had no right to involve her in your twisted lessons. She's just a baby. I know what's best for everyone, including you. Valerie needs to change. No, you need to change. I won't let you hurt my family anymore. We're done. I want you out of our lives. Adrian, you can't be serious. I thought you cared about me. I did care about you once, but not anymore. You've crossed a line and I won't tolerate it. I will make you pay. Adrian, please. I didn't mean for this to happen. It's too late for apologies. You need to face the consequences of your actions. He silently walked out of her room and gave Ava to me. I cried tears of joy. I just knew that you had to be some type of monster to torment an innocent child like that. Anger swirled within me, and I wanted to make Felicia pay. I asked Adrian what he had done to Felicia. I'm going to file a lawsuit against her. She endangered my child and harassed her mother. I will make sure she pays dearly for it. But Adrian, fighting a lawsuit, isn't it too much? You and Ava are my world. Nothing is too much if anyone hurts either of you. She had no right to treat you like that. Thanks for standing up for us. I can't believe she would go to such an extent to get her way. I don't know what I would have done without you here. It was terrifying. Promise from now on, you and Ava will be safe. I won't allow anyone to harm you ever again. True to his word, Adrian had filed the lawsuit. A couple of days later, Felicia was served of the court summons. Felicia was shocked. She asked Adrian what the summons was for. You endangered my child and harassed my wife after she gave birth. I had to file this lawsuit to hold you accountable for your actions, Adrian. Please. I didn't mean to cause harm. I was just trying to help. Your idea of help is twisted. You crossed a line and now you have to face the consequences for a family. You can't do this to me. Family doesn't give people the right to hurt others. You hurt Valerie and traumatized Ava. I won't stand for it. Please. I'll change. I promise. I won't interfere anymore. It's too late for promises. You have no evidence against me. How will you prove it? I installed baby cameras everywhere the night before Valerie got home from the hospital. I've got more than enough evidence of you hurting my family, Adrian. I beg you, don't do this. I'll do anything to make it right. You had your chance to be better. Now you must face the truth. You broke my trust and I won't let you hurt my family any longer. In the months that followed, things moved quickly in court. Felicia got charged with a misdemeanor and got a six-month jail sentence plus a dollar eight hundred fine. When the judge announced the sentence, Felicia broke down and started wailing in the courtroom. Adrian didn't seem to care about her tears, and instead looked satisfied that she got what she deserved. As I watched Felicia get escorted out of the courtroom with handcuffs, I couldn't help but feel relieved. I knew that for at least the next six months, my family and I would be free of Felicia's toxic behavior. Meanwhile, Adrian and I concentrated on raising our newborn daughter Ava and didn't let Felicia's actions define us. We found strength in each other and the support of our friends and loved ones. While Felicia was in jail, she had time to think about what she had done. At the same time, Adrian and I worked on healing from the hurt she caused. I couldn't fully forgive her, but I knew it was important to move forward for our own sake and our families. Felicia finished her jail time and sought counseling to make amends for her actions. I wanted to believe she could change, but I remained cautious and never let her come close to us again. One time she tried, I threatened to get a restraining order. I couldn't endanger my daughter again. 
our lives gradually got back to normal. The pain Felicia caused was still there, but we focused on building a better future for our family and cherishing the happiness Ava brought into our lives.